obviously the, the, the chicks have to go somewhere when you get them. And so you've ordered them from the hatchery, they're coming in the mail, or you're picking them up or collaborating with some other person to, you know, to get a shipment together. And you've got to put them somewhere. Where are you, where are you going to put them? So let's talk about the brooding infrastructure, this, this, this uh, surrogate mother hen, if you will. That, that's the way you need to think about this. So you've got to provide a place for these chicks to get started and, and grow that is, that is equivalent to what they would find with their mother hen. Now, where are we gonna put them? We're gonna put them in a rat-proof place. Over the years, I can tell you, uh, whenever somebody starts talking about predators, the number one predator, the number one uh, loss that we've had over the decades of raising chickens is rats. So this, wherever you put them, needs to be rat-proof. Now, rats can dig, and rats can get in a very, very small place. So our brooder has a concrete floor with a concrete sill coming up, and you're trying to make sure that rats can't dig in, they can't burrow in, and if a rat gets in there, it's got to at least go up a wall, you know, a, a wall somewhere to get in, and, and they don't like to do that because they're very vulnerable there. Something can pick them off from the outside. And it's great to have a couple of good cats, uh, cats around as part of your vermin control, you know, at your, at your farm and, and find a good hunter. If you've, got, if you've got a good cat that's a good hunter, um, that's, that's, a, that's a valuable asset on your farm. You're gonna need supplemental heat. So those little chicks need it to be about 90 degrees. And so if it's, you know, if it's cool, uh, you need to be able to keep that temperature at a constant about 90 degrees. And that temperature can move down. It needs to be 90 for you know about three or four days. And then you can start dropping it so that at about, at about two weeks, those chicks, and I know this, this is in disagreement with all the books that you see, but I can assure you that a two week old chick can handle 40 degrees, no problem. The idea is you wanna, just like in a, in a gardening situation, you wanna harden your plants off, you wanna harden the chicks off as fast as possible. So they do need supplemental heat, but it can back off after about four days, it can back off fairly precipitously um, as you move forward. This brooder needs to be ventilated. The number one uh, pro disease, sickness problem in animals worldwide forever has always been respiratory issues and so it's a lot more it's a lot more dangerous to have a, a protective animal structure that's too tight than too loose too airy and so they want ventilation but they don't want a breeze they don't want air right on them so the ventilation needs to be up off the floor uh, not where it goes right through. That's why you see, you know, traditional chicken houses, you know, had cupolas on top, uh, you know, or, or a cantilevered uh, ceiling where it could vent out the top. So you, you need air flow, but you don't want an actual breeze right on the chicks on, at, at, on, on the floor level. So here we are in the brooder, right in the brooder itself. I want to show you a few things that are uh, uh, critical as we start. These hovers are industry standard. This is, you know, this is what you find in any uh, industry house. They're on a thermostat, and you can set them for temperature. So obviously, as the chicks uh, get older, we start dropping the temperature down. Another thing I want you to just notice is that we don't have any insulation in the walls. This is just uh, sheet metal. They say, well, boy, that, you know, that, that on cold, that, that'd be really cold. But if you start putting insulation in here and you start covering this up, guess what's going to get in there? Rats. Rats are going to live in those walls. I've seen it, I don't know how many times. So I'd rather pay uh, for a little more propane and not have any rats than have insulation and have rats. So that's why we don't have, it's just a simple, you know, structure. The windows, the windows, of course, can open up so you can get ventilation through, um, but, but the draft doesn't go right on the chickens. All poultry is stimulated by light. All birds are stimulated by light, and so you want a, a, a place that, that has a lot of light. Now, um, what we've done is we've actually put skylights, but here's the thing, all of our skylights in the brooder are on the north side, not the south side. Here's why. 
because if they're on the south side and direct sunlight comes in, that direct sunlight will make a, a little warm spot on the floor. The chicks are drawn to that little warm spot on the floor and then a cloud moves over the sun, suddenly it gets chilly and the chicks, you know, the first day or two, they don't necessarily have enough, uh, whatever, uh, knowledge uh, to go seek another place. Next thing you know, you've got pneumonia and the chicks are dying. They're piling up, suffocating, trying to stay warm because they don't know, oh, a cloud came over the sun. You know, the heat lamp or the, you know, the, the, the brooder hover is right over there, but I don't know to go over there. And so, you know, I die right here in this spot. Remember, you know, these, these are... These are infants, okay? They're not the smartest thing in the world. So, um, so make your lights, you want light, but you don't want direct sunlight. You don't want direct sunspots. So on our brooder, the southern, the southern uh, uh, roof overhang, I mean, we have windows on the south side, but the roof overhangs four feet so that we don't get direct sunlight in. We, get, we, get, um, we don't get the actual uh, sun beams going into the floor making hot spots around the floor. So you want light but not direct sun beams that'll make a, a variegated, uh, a, a competitive heat source to your main heat source. Waterers. A lot of people use a little gallon jug, you know, waterers with a pan. Well, you know, those are problematic because the chicks can scratch stuff up in them and they can get filthy. Uh, we really like the nipple waterers and the industry has gone to that as well. They're very cheap, they're very uh, usable. Uh, we've used these for many, many years. They're virtually trouble-free as long as you have a clean, uh, a clean source of water going in, like from a well or something like that, where it's already uh, pre-screened and 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 and, and pre, uh, uh, like goes through a, a filter. These are the little nipple waterers. These are the little nipple waterers here. Okay, and when they, you know, when they uh, when they drink on it, it. Um, you know, it lets the water go. So this little area right here tends to stay a little damper. And so this right here is real warm and, uh, and composty. And so you know, that, that creates a, a zone here that has a lot more, you know, composty bugs and worms and things like that in it. So very comfortable, three partitions. Chicks are spread out nice. They're very, very comfortable. And uh, it's the way they start. Finally, uh, feeders, you know, you're going to have to have feeders in there for them and they'll be, you know, s small ones, okay, that the chick can, can reach in. Uh, and you want feeders that they can't waste the feed out of. You know, you want that, that, that beveled, that beveled edge because the chicken reaches in, they want to scrape out. And so if you're, if you're making homemade feeders out of something like PVC pipes, um, never cut them in half where the edges come up uh, straight. You want to cut out a third only a third, yeah, you're gonna throw that away, sorry. But that makes you a beveled edge because the chicken's gonna reach in there and they're gonna, they're gonna uh, uh, grab back, you know, their beak is curved, they're gonna grab that back and if they have just a, a straight side, they're gonna scoop that feed out over the side. But if it, if it bevels in, then they can't, they can't reach it out over the side. That's what you're, that's what you're after. Just a, enough hard to access that they don't waste the feed. That's the infrastructure, that's the minimal infrastructure you need to get started with your brooder.